So you're on a low income and you're probably living paycheck to paycheck. If only you had a little bit more money, you could probably make your finances work just like everybody else. Hint, they probably don't have it figured out either. While extra money would help, I'm going to go over in this video tips on how to manage the money that you have right now. So let's jump in on how to manage your money when you're on a low income. Start with a reset. So if you're on a low income, you're probably thinking about money all of the time. So it's good to have a reset and to take a break from all of that. So for a week or maybe longer, if you want to go longer, I want you to go on a spending freeze. So however long you want to do this, either a no spend week or longer if you can do it, just a period of time that you're not going to spend any money unless the things that you have to pay for like bills, etc. Just so you can take a break from money for a bit. Now you're probably not spending a lot anyway, so this shouldn't be too much of a stretch. But why this can be a good idea just to start with is that it can reset your habits and your thoughts about finances. It just puts you in a better frame of mind to start again and start putting a plan into place on how to manage your money. So it's just basically taking a break before you jump back in. Now obviously you still need to pay for your bills and for food. But before you go to the grocery store, take a stock take of all of the food that you currently have. So go through your pantry, go through your fridge and freezer and just write a list of any meals that you can make with what you already have. So the more meals that you can make from what you already have, the better. Not only will you be able to use up what you already have and prevent food wastage and save some money, when you have to go to the grocery store, you'll only be supplementing to add to those meals that you can already make. So you won't be buying everything from scratch, you'll just be supplementing. Also during this reset period, take a note of any free activities in your area. So perhaps your council or your district has a list of all of the activities in your area. There might be festivals or events or even shopping centres sometimes have free events for kids. Although I would caution to stay out of the shopping centre if you can help it. Anything that sounds fun is worthwhile considering. So perhaps you could pack a lunch and go and see free music somewhere or something else that's going on. Perhaps you could visit the art gallery if that's free to enter. You could go to the library and borrow books or libraries have a lot more other things to borrow these days as well from CDs, music, DVDs, lots of things. So during this reset period, just try to make it a goal to spend as little as possible. Nothing if you can do it, although that's probably unrealistic just to take a break from thinking about money and spending money and all of that. And so then you can move into the next phase to build your foundation. So now that you've sort of had a break and reset your thoughts and your habits around money, now it's time to put a system into place. So under this section, we're going to cover three things. One is building your budget. The second is paying off debt. And the third is starting a savings plan. So let's start with building a budget. Now, if you already have a budget, that's great. You need a way to be tracking your income and expenses. Now, I don't like general budgets, the one where you're supposed to just fit your figures into some uh, sheet or app or anything. I prefer people make uh, personal budgets for them based on what they actually earn and what they actually spend. And so the only way to do this is to track your income and expenses. For one whole month, track every bit of income that comes in and anything that you spend. Now, it doesn't matter if your income is weekly or monthly. It also might be that it's the same each paycheck or it might vary depending on how many hours you've done. Just get it all written down somewhere. It could be in a journal, it could be in a spreadsheet, it could be in an app, whatever makes sense for you. You're just tracking it. Do the same for all of your expenses. Anything that you spend money on, track that as well. So include anything that you're paying money on. Bills, food, shopping, transportation, anything. So anytime you spend money, just write it down. You can either categorize things if you want to put everything under, say, entertainment or transportation, or you can give everything its own separate line. That's entirely up to you. I always think that in the beginning, it's a good idea to keep things separate because then you can start to see trends really easily. But once you've been doing it a while, then you can start to categorize things into general groups. So at the end of one month, you should have a good idea of what a typical month is for you. So tally everything up, expenses on one side, income on the other, and just see where you're at. So do you have any money left over at the end of the month? The goal is to spend less than you earn. So even on a low income, you want to be spending less than you earn because the only way to get ahead is to have some money left over. So if that's already the case, then great. But if not, you're either going to have to do one of two things, increase your income or reduce your expenses. Now, reducing your expenses is probably going to be easier because it's in your power it's not as easy to just find extra income but it can be done now eventually down the track you want to look at how you can eventually get out of being a low income earner and how you can better yourself that might mean studying or moving cities or moving jobs all of these things take a lot of logistics and might be costly though so you have to really consider them so now that you've tracked your income and you've got a little bit of a working budget for you now's the time to put a plan to reduce debt 
So make a list of any debts that you have that might be credit cards, uh, car loans, student loans. You can include your mortgage in this if you have one. It, it's up to you whether you want to pay it off early or not. Some people like to, some people just leave that out because they don't think it's important to pay off quickly. That's up to you. If you are thinking about borrowing for a car, I would say hold off and don't do it and try and save up something instead because cars depreciate so fast and you end up paying so much more for it, something that's just not worth it in the end. But I know for some areas, there's no getting around it. You need transport. Just try and find the cheapest thing that you can. Anyway, beside each debt, I want you to put the minimum payment, how much you owe, what the date is that you're meant to be paying by, and also the interest rate if you know it. Usually this is somewhere on your statement on how much interest you're paying, but sometimes the bank will list it just on their website. So if you know the interest rate that you're paying, put that there too, because that's going to be really important. Now from your list of debts, you're going to choose one to focus on, just one, and then you're going to pay the minimum on the rest. So which one are you going to choose? It doesn't really matter. You could choose the one with the lowest balance. That means you'll be paying it off faster and so you'll have less debts overall. You could pay the one with the highest interest rates. That's going to save you money in the long run. Or it could just be the debt that you just want to get rid of because you've had it for so long and you just want it out of there. It really doesn't matter that much. There are pros and cons to each. It depends whether you want to save a little bit more money or you just want to get rid of a particular debt. At the end of the day, it's just focusing on one and paying the minimum balance on the rest. And then when you pay one off, you focus on the next one and so on. Now, the reason you want to focus on paying off your debts fast is that it's going to free up money for other things. A lot of people are spending so much money on paying off debts that they could be using for something else. And if you're on a low income, you need that extra money. So now you have a plan in place for your debts, let's move to savings. So the third step is to build your savings. Now generally you want to be paying your debt off before any savings except for two things. So you want to be building your emergency fund and also your yearly expenses fund. So your emergency fund should come first. It's like your insurance for in case anything goes wrong. So say you need a new tire on your car or something else breaks and that you really need to get it fixed. That's what your emergency fund is for. So how much you need in your emergency fund is going to vary on how much things cost in your area. But if you're on a low income, just look at starting with about $500. And if you can get it up to a thousand, that's great. A lot of people say that you should have six months worth of income in there. And that's great if you can do it. But if you're on a low income, I think that's unrealistic to expect someone to be able to afford to save up that much money in a short period of time. Just focus on 500 or a thousand to start with. That's more than enough to cover any minor emergencies. You can build it later on, but just get the basics there first. So next is your yearly expenses fund. This is a fund where everybody has these big yearly expenses that could be insurance that's due once a year. It could be Christmas. So what you wanna do with this fund is to work out how much things are going to cost over the course of a year, how much all of your big yearly expenses are gonna cost, and then divide it by how often you get paid. So the goal is to put away a little bit each pay so that when the expense comes around each year, you'll have the money there and you won't have to scramble and try and find it. You'll already have saved for it. Now, of course, this does require some pre-planning. You have to work out how much you need and then start putting some money away. And you might need to put a little bit extra in the beginning because you won't have a full year's worth of saving to pour it. This is just going to stop those certain times of the year where you're just struggling for money. You just want to have built up your yearly expenses fund to cover those big expenses that come around each year. You've got your foundation built, you've got your budget happening, you've got a plan for reducing debt and a plan for building some savings. What's next? So the third stage is just to live the plan. And what do I mean by this? So as you go through just living your life, trying to manage your money as best as you can, your life is going to adapt and therefore your finances is also going to adapt. So like living, it's important to be flexible with your finances as well. And I'm constantly changing my budget according to what's going on in my life. And if my expenses change or if my income changes, I'm constantly changing things as life changes. But if everything's not going to stay the same, how do you make it all work? Well, I think it's important just to keep on top of things and just keep gradually trying to get rid of the debt, start saving, and just trying to spend less than you earn overall. You want to treat your finances with as little emotion as possible. And I know when it comes to money, people are irrational and emotional. But the more that you can be level-headed about your finances, the better that you're going to be in the long run. You want to separate who you are from what you earn. Your money and how much you have doesn't define who you are. You want to keep them separate. You just want to keep a level head about your money. So no emotion. So since you're not going to be emotional, 
it's time to be responsible about your money. Because if you can change your attitude to money, you can change your life. So now just go through and analyze your spending habits and try and see where you can cut back. So even if you do have some spare money left over, it's good to be critical about all of your purchases. Now what you keep in your budget is going to be up to you. It's going to be personal because personal finance is personal. I suggest just keeping those few things that you absolutely love that you can't live without and either reducing or getting rid of the rest. Look, if you're on a low income, it's likely that you're spending as little as possible anyway, but it doesn't hurt to go through and see where else you can cut back. Being frugal is nothing to be ashamed of. Some of the biggest billionaires in the world are frugal. A lot of the times we tell ourselves that we deserve something because we've had a bad week or we're not feeling great about ourselves. But as I've said before, saying I deserve it is killing us financially. You deserve more than just the stuff that you have. You know what you do deserve? To be empowered about your finances and not to get sucked into the constant marketing messages, the constant social media pushes, the crazy consumerism that we just seem to be bombarded with. So cook your own food, take your lunch to work, turn off any heating and cooling anytime that you can, look for a cheaper phone plan, think about selling your car if you can use public transport and it works out cheaper. You might have to do the sums on that one. Just stop buying so many things and just spend less overall. Go out and find cheap, free and fun things to do. You want to enjoy life, but not pay for the privilege. If you want a second job, that's great. That can be a great way to bring in second income. But do be mindful not to swap all of your personal time for money in every case. And of course, look to improve your position, but not if the cost is too high. Remember, the goal for managing any sort of money is to spend less than you earn. But I also think having a good life is important too. So just keep tracking your spending and your income. Keep working down those debts. Put savings plans into place and don't let your income define you. You're probably not going to be on a low income forever. This might be just a small part of your life. But even if it comes a time where you are earning more, these money management tips work no matter what you're earning. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I will see you in the next video. Take care.